Hello everybody. Now uh, I'll discuss the remaining part of the heat conduction uh, problem uh, associated with the different manufacturing processes. So we have already discussed the heat conduction equation that heat flux, how to calculate the heat flux. Now here we'll try to look into the, the first law of thermodynamics. So first law of thermodynamics is basically says about the energy conservation principle. So we can say that energy can convert from one form to uh, another form but it cannot be uh, neither created nor destroyed uh, during this process. So it basically changes the one form to another form. So that is the basic principle associated with the first law of thermodynamics. Now what we represent the thermodynamics in the mathematical form that we will try to look here. So we see that total energy change in a system and the content of the system is basically equal to the difference between the total energy entering the system and energy leaving the system. So we can consider any particular system what is the amount of the energy is the entering and what is the amount of the energy is leaving and remaining total change in that in the control of the system is basically difference between these two input and output. So therefore mathematically can express like that total energy entering to the system minus total energy leaving the system and that is equal to the what is the change in the total energy of the system. So here you can see the E in minus E out net energy transfer which is equivalent to the change in the energy of the system. So in the rate form that means in terms of the per unit time that we can say that e, we have put here E dot in that it is indicates that it is a in the rate form it is indicated that means per unit time we are expressing this energy balance here. So E dot in minus E dot out which is equal to DE the change of the energy system with respect to time DE by DT. So this we can say that from the energy conservation principle as per uh, first law of thermodynamics. Now further we explore this um, uh, energy system of a particular um, process and we can see that the property of the system actually it depends on the state of the system. State of the system means that the system does not change during the process in that cases is known as the uh, steady state process. It means that if the state of the system does not change the, with respect to time then we can say it is a steady state process otherwise if there is a transient variation with respect to time there is a variation of the state of the system then you can say that it is in the transient state. So since the state of the process is not changing with respect to the uh, with the process the energy supplied to the process which is in the form of the heat energy work or in terms of the mass different form which is equal to the energy rejected from the system. We can see the different types of this energy in terms of the energy which is in the it can be in the form of a heat energy in the form of a work done to the system or in the, in the form of a mass transfer to the system and when it is uh, input is equal to the output that means the output in the form of a either heat or on in the form of a work done or in the form of a, a mass all these cases when it is the input equal to uh, output and that is the uh, true in case of the steady state situation of a particular thermodynamic system. So we can say that E dot in minus E dot out it is associated with the steady state form that means if you look into the previous one here we can see that E dot in minus E dot out which is equivalent to the energy store rate of that means change of a uh, total energy of the system the rate of change of the total energy of the system which is equivalent but in this case when steady state situation this rate of change will be 0 then it becomes E dot in equal to E dot out and that is the corresponds to the steady state situation of a thermodynamic system. So therefore in the heat transfer the other forms of the energy is actually ignore other forms of the energy but only heat thermal or heat energy or thermal energy if we consider in such cases the general energy balance can be equation can be represented like that. So Q in minus Q out to the system net energy heat transfer and some cases there might be possibility of the total heat generation within the system. So E dot E gen is the heat generation within the system that is equal to the change in the thermal energy of the system. So that is why delta E thermal uh, energy of this we, we have written in a different way that initially we asked what is the input to the system and output to the system which is equal to change of the energy uh, within the system. Now if we consider that there is a there might be the possibility is there. So some heat generation within the system will be there. Uh, if it is there in that cases we can simply modify the net heat transfer 
uh, energy generation which is equivalent to the change in the thermal energy of the system. So this we further advances the energy balance of the system in the different perspective. Now looking into that then we can we usually know the heat conduction case and already we have uh, discussed the in the steady state situation Fourier's law of the heat conduction but in this case we try to look into the heat conduction of a medium it's a it's a usually represent in the three dimensional form and depending upon the uh, which can be as a function of space as well as the time both. So therefore temperature is the output by solving the heat conduction equation where that can be represents in the form of a spatial and temporal variable. So, t equal to as a function of x, y, z. So, in three dimensional case, t should be a function of x, y, z. It should vary in the space and since it is a three dimensional, then we can represent t is a function of the space and time. But if it is a two dimensional distribution, then t should be uh, two space variable and time. If it is a one dimensional, t can be a function of only x and t and t is the small t is the time. So, this way we can classify the different kinds of the problems or heat conduction equation. It can be one dimensional form, it can be two dimensional form or it can be three dimensional form depending upon the uh, problem itself. Now, this problem uh, is in, uh, can be called as a steady state problem when it is independent of the time. And when it is a time dependent problem, then we can say it is a tangent process or tangent problem, we can say like that. So, in that sense, the heat conduction is the one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional according to the number of predominant directions. We are supposed to analyze uh, as per the this thing is the actual problem associated to the any kind of the manufacturing process. Now, we see that general co convention for the heat transfer direction, the heat transfer in the x axis direction is considered as a positive and heat transfer direction and, and um, as a positive and, and vice versa. Okay. Now uh, that depends upon the uh, what we are defining the problem. Now sometimes we easily know the lump heat transfer uh, analysis associated with any kind of the, uh, the uh, problem in manufacturing or any other problem also. So in this case the lump heat system is basically the body's temperature which is changes uniformly with respect to time. Then the heat transfer system is called as the lump system in such system temperature does not vary the position. For example this is the system but uniformly the temperature is uniform throughout this and basically it's a it's basically neglect the local variation of the temperature within the body. So rather it works on the one simple average temperature that exists within the uh, body and here at time t equal to t1 this is the all uniform temperature we can say it's average temperature of the body and converting to and with respect to time temperature time it is varying to some other temperature and but temperature distribution within the body is uniform or we can consider this as simple average temperature so here this indicates t equal to t1 one time and this is t equal to t2 another time so, this type of analysis we can say the lump heat transfer analysis sometimes in certain problem. So, if this kind of situation exists with not variation of the body uh, temperature within the system uh, that uniform temperature exists in that cases we can do the tangent analysis in the form of a lump heat transfer uh, analysis. Now, we try to look into the one dimensional heat conduction equation Cartesian coordinate system we see that what the this equation actually develop uh, in a any kind of heat transfer analysis associated with the any kind of the manufacturing process. Now here you consider that heat conduction through a thin element so we can thin element say at a distance x and as a distance x plus delta x if you see this is a thin element and here heat transfer is basically qx and q uh, he at this point x at a distance x plus delta x the q x plus delta x is the uh, rate of the heat transfer here. Now uh, these are the long parallel and assuming that within the system thing there is a heat generation within the system there is a heat generation also occurs. So this indicates the heat generation is there and the cross section area A and distance and we are assuming this is a one dimensional problem. Now the heat conduction taking place along the x direction only so we can see the positive x direction the heat conduction occurs the heat transfer occurs this along this direction and the specific heat and density of this particular wall this material is the c and rho we consider here now we look into the energy balance during the small time interval delta t what how we can represent the energy balance in the for this particular system so rate of heat conduction at x at this particular point rate of heat conduction minus rate of heat conduction at x plus delta that is plus 
any rate of the heat generation, rate of the heat generation inside the element that is equivalent to the rate of change of the energy trans content of the element. So that what way we have energy principle we consider here and based on that we are representing the same similar way and mathematically we can see that how this can be expressed from this energy balance. Now here we see that Qx is the rate of the heat conduction at a distance x then at distant rate of the heat conduction at x plus delta x equal to q x plus delta x plus energy generation rate of the internal energy generation generated inside the element that is equal to the rate of change of the energy content so delta e on this particular element divided by delta t over the time delta t this is the rate of change of the energy content of the element so this is energy balance we can write in this way now rate of energy content and the rate of energy heat generation can also be expressed like that so i am just talking about the delta e element how to express this one so delta e element is basically for this particular element what is the delta E element rate of change of the energy content E T plus delta T that means at time T plus delta T minus energy content at time T. So E T plus delta T minus E T that is equivalent to the heat content the mass of the this system specific heat and we know there the change of temperature. So that is why change of temperature mass specific heat change of temperature T T plus delta T minus T at time t so that is equal to the mass equal to rho into v so rho into v is the the cross section area a and we see this is the distance delta x so this a into delta x represents the so delta v i can say the a into delta x is the represent the volume of this thin cell so we mass equal to density into volume a into delta x into specific heat is already there and this is the temperature difference t at two different time. So this can also be represented like that e uh, okay this is the one expression and e uh, element uh, generation the rate of the generation inside the element can also be represented like that e generation into volume. So basically we represent the internal heat generation term that is per unit volume. So uh, that we, we can the two elements one is the total volume and this e generation that represents usually in terms of the unit volume so e generation and the volume that represents the e generation into volume means a into delta x that is the total amount of the rate of the amount of the heat generation inside the element once we do this expression then we can further look into the equation one also qx minus qx plus delta x and we represent the e generation uh, the rate of the generation inside the element so e small e generation this volume and then the last term represents the rate of change of the energy content of the element is basically we have already so rho c a delta x t at time t plus delta t minus t at time t divided by delta t that time difference. So with the further manipulate this one divided by 1 by a we can say minus 1 by a q x plus delta x minus q x by delta x plus e generation e generation rho c uh, this expression uh, we can easily see. And you can follow it up then if taking the limits delta x tends to 0 at delta t tends to 0 in that case we can say that if uh, we apply the limit rules here and from there we can find out that q x plus delta x minus q x is basically delta in this case we can represent that uh, 1 by a so 1 by a and this d by dx equal to k a dt by dx because this we if you remember that in this case q equal to k a dt by dx so here you can see that q equal to minus k a dt by dx at first Fourier's law of the heat conduction that that we have already discussed this part we put it here q expression here so minus k into dt by dx so uh, here so that k a dt by dx is basically the rate of change of the q and the here uh, the change of the q here and this delta 1 by delta x that represents the because with the delta x tends to 0 then it becomes d by del by del x here and 1 by e is already there and we had taken care of the negative sign by including this term. So here that represents that it corresponds to the is basically k a del t by del x because it's ornamental and here this del x is here del by uh, del x so that we can say and this part and this 1 by a is there also so 1 by a we have considered so this is converted to this term 
and E generation is there plus uh, equal to rho C and this we can represent that this part represents the del T by del T change of temperature with respect to change of uh, time. So that's why we are getting the limits of del x tends to 0 and del t tends to 0 we can convert this is the, the equation that is one dimensional heat conduction equation and considering the constant area of the plane wall the one dimensional tangent heat conduction equation can be becomes we can say that uh, the const, constant area so there is no change in area so therefore we can take this balance and then del by del x k dt by dx e generation rho c del t by del t. So, this is the we can see but this equation represents the k is inside del by del x. So, k can be the variable uh, conductivity and uh, E generation is the heat generation. This includes the variable thermal conductivity because uh, thermal conductivity changes with respect to space then it is better to take include uh, this a k position of the k should be here. Now, if we assume k is a constant it is not varying uh, the, with respect to space then we can take k is outside of this. Uh, derivative. So, therefore, k can be uh, constant term. So, therefore, k into del to t by del uh, x square plus e generation divided by k and here rho cp by k coming then one uh, we know that k by rho cp equal to the thermal diffusivity for so then y by alpha alpha is the thermal diffusivity and del t by del t this is the this is valid for the constant thermal conductivity. So, we can derive the one dimensional heat conduction equation. Uh, both uh, tangent equation including the effect of the heat generation term within the domain within the system and if we consider the variable conductivity and uh, then k this is the expression for k is the inside here and if it is a constant uh, conductivity thermal conductivity then we represent this is the equation so our thermal diffusivity now further we can work on this thing if uh, the one dimensional steady state without heat generation if we heat generation term is neglected then it becomes then and it is steady state then we can say that steady state means this component will be zero so here del 2 t by del x square is basically 0 this indicates the one dimensional steady state heat conduction without any heat generation. But with heat generation but steady state equation then E generation by k term will be equal to 0 this is one dimensional steady state with heat generation term. And if there is no heat generation irrespective of the steady state transient state in that case the equation can be written like that. So, no heat generation term this term will be neglected and del 2 t by del x square equal to 1 by alpha del t by del t. So, no heat generation term. So, we can see that different form of the one dimensional heat conduction equation and depending upon the thermal problem uh, we can consider the which situation is exactly matching the actual physical problem associated with the uh, manufacturing process and as per we can choose the particular equation there. The similar analysis can also be done in a cylindrical coordinate system here I am deriving all this uh, not deriving uh, the complete equation but just to understand that how the equations uh, the forms in this case. So, considering the heat conduction along the radial direction uh, only from the inside to the outside of a very long cylinder remember it is a very long cylinder uh, from inside to the uh, outside. So, uh, radial direction heat is transported and this is the uh, long cylinder if we consider in that case we can represent the equations 1 by r del by del r r k del t by del r equal to e generation equal to rho c del t by del t. So, here variable conductivity means candidate is included inside the, uh, the, uh, the first derivative term here del by del r. Now, uh, if we constant conductivity then we can keep k outside and then or k keep it as a constant e generation by k equal to rho c p by k 1 by alpha del t by del t. So, this is the form of the equation. Now, depending upon the situation here alpha is the thermal diffusivity and we have already explained but depending upon the situation this can be the steady state. So, steady state means there is a time very this component will be absent because it is a change of temperature with respect to time. So, that it should be 0 in the steady state situation. Now, in this case transient problem but no heat generation then we can E generation terms can be neglected we you can use this equation and if no heat generation at steady state situation is there. So, this equal to 0 and uh, that is valid in case of the heat conduction in the radial direction in a long uh, cylinder. In that case we can utilize this particular different forms of the heat conduction equation. Now, similar exercise can also be performed 
in case of the heat conduction equation in uh, a spherical coordinate system in the spherical coordinate system in this case we consider the heat conduction along the radial directions but from inside to the outside of a, a sphere so from the inside to the outside of a sphere uh, this heat is conducted and uh, in in this case that how, what can be the form of the governing equations heat conduction equation so here we see the r is the variable the along the radial direction so 1 by r square here del by del r r square k del t by del r equal plus heat generation term equal to rho c del t by del t the variable conductivity so k is in, uh, included within that uh, can be considered as a function of the uh, special function or as a k can be is a function of r in that case is k can be inside here see you can include it but if we assume the k is constant it's not varying as a function of r so in that case we can give k as a constant e generation term divided by k we can put it here divided by k and that equal to rho c by here the k equal 1 by alpha del t by del t so here constant conductivity this is the equation the heat conduction equation in a, a spherical coordinate system now here alpha is the thermal dissipation alpha equal to k by uh, rho c so uh, in this case uh, the steady state uh, situation is there so then this can be zero in the right hand side term so we can use this equation form if the transient form but there is no heat generation term we use the second form of the equation if it is a steady state but no heat generation is term then we can use the this equation and here you can see it's a the temperature is basically as a function of r only that means in a sphere you can use the heat conduction in the radial direction uh, then the t can be represented as a function of r so here the if you see the nature of the equation is something different uh, with respect to the uh, when the heat transfer occurs within a long cylinder so here you see the del by del r r del t by del r equal to zero for steady state no heat generation term is there but in case of the sphere it becomes del by del r, r square del t by del r equal to 0. So, that means functional form of the temperature in these two cases must be different uh, this case. So, depending upon the geometrical shape of the domain, solution domain and as for the we can we can utilize the different uh, heat transfer the either long cylinder or the plane wall or it can be in a sphere. Okay. So, based on that we choose the equation and we can solve it. Now, here the in generalized form of the heat conduction equation in Cartesian cylinder and spherical coordinate system, we can see the observe that the it can be represented like this equation del by del r r to the power n k thermal contact with del t by del r plus heat generation term. But remember, this generation term is represent per unit volume. So, and rho c del t by del t, this is the equation we can utilize in the generalized system. But where n equal to 0 and r equal to x for the Cartesian coordinate system. So, here if you see the n equal to 0 and r equal to x then equation becomes del by del x and n equal to 0. So, what to the 1. So, k del t by del x plus e generation term equal to rho c del t by del t. Similarly, if n equal to 1 for the cylindrical coordinates and n equal to 2 for the spherical coordinates. So, this is the more general form of the heat conduction equation we can utilize for the analysis in case of the that uh, any Cartesian cylindrical and spherical uh, coordinate system. But remember in Cartesian we can do the analysis in only in the one dimensional problem associated with the heat conduction equation. So, we need to understand the heat conduction equation to analyze further the how generalized form of the heat conduction equation in the rectangular coordinates we usually forms. Now, here you see that one dimension we can understand but similar analogy we can apply in case of the, uh, the rectangular coordinates. So, here rate of the heat conduction at the x, y and z three different direction. So, that is equivalent to the q x plus q y plus q z. So, we can see the figure also. It is a q x as per the x direction the heat input to the system on the wall uh, along the uh, normal to the x direction and is the q x plus delta x the output from the system uh, normal to the x direction. So, here that is why q x and minus q x plus del x. Similarly, in y direction and z direction we can say the q y q y plus minus q y plus del y and q z and q z plus delta z. So, all 
this case we consider the uh, energy equation and then we can say the rate of energy the rate of the heat generation inside the element inside the element so here you can see a rate of change of the energy that is equal to the rate of the change of energy content of the element so that delta e element by delta t similar expression we are utilizing but here we use the three different coordinates x y and z coordinates are there now Similar, we can access the delta E element. So, delta E element can be expressed like that. That because we consider there is a delta T. So, time component we consider delta T. So, delta T is basically the T at uh, T plus uh, at time gap, the T plus delta T minus T. So, that indicates the uh, delta T. So, at time T plus delta T and time T. So, therefore, energy at time T plus delta T minus time T that is equal to the heat content within the system equal to Mc and the temperature difference between this two time gap. So, T plus delta T temperature and time, temperature at, at, at time T. So, therefore, M again the rho V, M, the mass equal to density into volume. So, volume equal to element volume equal to del x into del y into del z that is the volume of this particular element. So, rho and C is the specific heat and the temperature difference. So, finally, you can represent the this is the expression for the uh, delta E element here, but heat generation similar way we represent the heat total heat generation is represent that per unit volume that term is defined and then we multiply by the total volume V element. So, each generation by the total volume we can replace Now, from this equation, we can say that Qx plus Qy plus Qz minus Qx plus delta x minus Qy plus delta minus Qz plus delta plus the heat generation term we represent this equation. So, final manipulate this equation, we can see that dividing by the delta x, delta y, delta z, we can see that it becomes 1 by del y, del z, and the this term is there, this term is there, Qy component and the z component generation term, and this is the temperature difference with respect to time here. Now, taking the limit delta x, delta y and delta z and delta t tends to 0. In that case, we can represent the limit delta x tends to 0. We can see that uh, it represents that this equation delta tends to 0 and uh, we can find out that uh, the similar expression that this term equal to del x plus delta del x minus qx that is equal to del qx by del x and similarly that means del x by del x into uh, so here we can see that qx plus delta x minus qx divided by delta x so in this case we can see that qx plus this is equal to uh, qx plus the del qx and del x now qx equal to k a dt by dx that we can see. So, that is why we are writing in this way q x equal to k a here k a equal to uh, del y into delta z because remember the a here cross section the area which, which is normal to the uh, x direction. So, that is why we consider delta y and delta z. So, you have done the same thing into del t by del x uh, that we can see and it is correspond to the del y del x. So, in this case we can see that 1 by del y by del z del by del x minus k del y by del z del t by del x. So, similar for the other direction and we can convert it, we can manipulate it, then we can del by del x equal to into k del t by del x first term because of the k x term, similar exercise for the y term, similar exercise for the z term, e generation term and rho c del t by del t. This is the more general form of the or three dimensional form of the heat conduction equation we can utilize for the analysis of the uh, when any manufacturing process associated when we try to do heat transfer analysis of this particular manufacturing process we use the this basic heat conduction equation and here uh, this term is there and heat generation term also there and the tangent variation of the transfer now depending upon the problem what kind of the analysis we are doing whether it is a steady state or transient state analysis or whether there is any heat generation term is there or not based on that we can utilize this particular uh, equation and we solve the uh, this heat conduction problem to get the temperature distribution. Now, if we, if we see this heat conduction equation, if we solve it, we will get the temperature distribution as a function of space x, y and z as well as the, as a function of time. So, here you can get the temperature distribution which is varying with respect to space as well as the with respect to time. Now, 
the same equation we have written here but constant thermal conductivity we say that k we can keep k outside of this derivative term so then del 2 by del x square del t 2 by del y square del 2 z by del z square and each generation by k term equal to 1 by alpha del t by del t in, in this cases we are having the constant thermal conductivity where alpha equal to thermal diffusivity term so this above equation is known as the fourier uh, bio equation this more generally is from the equation now in steady state this tangent part will be zero and this is called the Poisson equation tangent state but with there is no heat generation term diffusion equation steady state with no heat generation and this equation Laplace so these are the three different form of the equation three dimension state of the heat conduction equation and depending upon the uh, problem we can choose the particular equation for the analysis and all these cases definitely in these cases if you do the analysis you will be getting the temperature as a function of x y and z in this case, you will be getting the temperature as a function of x, y, z, t. In this case, you will be getting the temperature as a function of x, y and z. But here, if you see the temperature profile in this case and this case, although it is a function of x, y and z, but temperature profile will be different because here there is a heat generation term is there and here there is no heat generation term. Now, general heat conduction equation in the cylindrical coordinate system, we can perform the similar exercise uh, what we did in the uh, Cartesian coordinate system the same exercise or rectangular coordinate system same exercise we can perform here also but here we replace uh, the cylindrical coordinate system we have defined the z r z and phi here so here we place the we can relate between the Cartesian uh, the rectangular coordinates to the cylindrical coordinate system where x equal to r cos phi y equal to r sin phi and z equal to z in the rectangular coordinate system then we can uh, if we replace this one x equal to this then we will get this equation more general equations you can see in terms of the r in terms of the phi and in terms of the z so here the temperature can be represent as a function of the r phi z and temperature t now general heat conduction equation in spherical coordinates similar way we can perform the spherical coordinate system also here you can see the r theta phi here it is there so here you can see the variable the r theta phi so in this case if we define the spherical coordinate system r theta and phi so we are getting the temperature as a function of r theta and phi the system and at time uh, time t so depending upon that we can analyze the rectangular coordinate system or we can analyze the cylindrical coordinate system and we can analyze the spherical coordinate system and uh, all this in the more generalized heat conduction equation and you, you remember that earlier when you uh, discussed this thing one dimensional problem there is a temperature as only as if it was function of only the radial distance r but when you try to do the three dimensional analysis 3d analysis then we can see all can be a function of the the three different variables also here r phi and z here r theta and phi this way we can do the different kind of the analysis and depending upon the problem we can choose the what particular coordinate system and we can do the analysis to get the temperature distribution from the solution of the heat conduction equation i think uh, that we have just understood try to understand the de develop the basic heat conduction equation uh, associated with any problem uh, any manufacturing problem that i have tried to explain in these cases and now later we will try to explore further on the how to apply all this heat conduction equation in the in a in a very practical uh, problem associated with the manufacturing process so that's all thank you very much for your kind attention mm -hmm.